What's going on guys, I'm Mars Bill, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Farm Tutorial video. In this video today I'm going to be showing you how to make my dual general mob farm design. This general mob farm is one of the very first truly symmetrical general mob farms on the Bedrock Edition. And will take advantage of not only all of the cave spawns, but also all of the surface spawns as well. So on most general mob farm designs you're going to have a setup that looks like this. All of your floors are going to be solid blocks, meaning if you have a solid block above the area that the mobs are spawning on, then it's going to make that mob spawn inside of the cave group instead of the surface group. So practically on this side under all these solid blocks only cave spawns can spawn. And then they will normally do something like having glass on the very top, that way they can take advantage of a small amount of the surface spawns. However, on this farm, if you look on this side, we not only have the solid blocks to take advantage of all of our cave spawns, we also have the slabs over here, which have a very special characteristic. And that characteristic is that you can have surface spawn spawning underneath the slabs. So long story short, if we have a mob spawn underneath the solid block here, it's going to be considered a cave spawn. And it doesn't matter how far it is down, as long as it has a solid block directly over top of the Y axis going up, it's going to be put inside of the cave spawn category. And if it has a transparent block such as glass, leaves, or certain slabs, I'll get into that in a minute, or stairs above it, then it's going to be considered a surface spawn. So basically what I mean by certain slabs is if you have a upper slab, this really works out because you have a spawnable surface up top, so mobs still spawn up here. However, you do still get the benefit of having the surface spawns underneath it as well. However, if you take this out and you put a lower half slab down, you are essentially losing the ability to have anything spawn up here. But furthermore, everything underneath this lower half slab is considered a cave spawn. Interesting, right? If you want to learn more about my testing on this topic, then check out this video in the top right, and you'll basically see the entire testing thing showing and proving that this is the way it works. So just remember, upper slabs are going to equal surface spawns, and lower slabs are going to equal cave spawns. Which is kind of ironic, because a lot of people will spawn proof the top of their farm, putting lower slabs all over it, and you're essentially making every single thing underneath these lower slabs into cave spawns. So that essentially means that we have the entire right side open to surface spawns, and the entire left side of this farm here open to cave spawns, which is going to give us 50% of each of the mob cap, which is going to equal 8 mobs for the surface, and 8 mobs for the cave. Furthermore, because we have all of this open surface spawnable areas, we are going to get a ton of drowned that are spawning on the surface only spawning areas, and also a bunch of squid, which is going to give us a ton of ink. You'll also get the occasional pillager, and also wandering traders. Just keep in mind, in order for you to get the drowned and the squid, you are going to have to either build this over a river biome or an ocean biome. Speaking of more squid and drowned, if you want this to produce more squid and drowned, you can just hit that target block over there, and that's basically going to keep this one side totally flooded, and that's going to allow you to have a lot more squid and a lot more drowned spawning on this platform here. Now if you wanted to turn this into strictly a drowned and a squid farm, then we have the master side over here where you can hit this target block. And once you hit that target block, you'll see that light come on. That's going to flood all of the platforms and that's basically going to keep it flooded. That way the only thing that's going to spawn here is going to be squid and drowned. So now you have a drowned farm and a squid farm. Just keep in mind if you undo this one, it's not going to start this one until this target block is hit too, so I would recommend having a bunch of arrows up here or a bow with infinity. Another function of this farm is you might have noticed that it does not have any observers. If you look closely, we have a waterlogged piston, and that waterlogged piston basically has a redstone block that is pushed up underneath it, which is going to seal it and keep it from leaking until that redstone block is moved out of the way. So whenever that redstone block powers that piston, it's actually going to push this piston up, and then it's going to push this piston up, basically sealing the entire line. And it's a lot more reliable this way. You don't run into the observers losing track of all the different platforms. And then all of your different platforms going all wonky willy nilly on you. Everything runs seamless all together just like it should. Furthermore, everything's going to land inside of this giant water funnel, which is going to be pushed down into a trident killer that is designed to handle not only all of the squids, but the spiders as well. And if you're curious as to how that trident killer works, then I'll link a video for this trident killer in the top right right now. The collection system is very very handy, all of the experience points is going to go by and it's going to go up that bubble column up to the AFK player, however all the items are going to be pulled out of the water stream by these three hopper minecarts and it's basically going to send them all down into this dropper which is turned on and off with the farm and then everything's going to be dropped straight down to wherever you have a collection area, a item sorter or whatever else you want to hook up to it. Now there's a ton of different ways that you can set up your storage system. You can have your storage system up here if you would like or you can have it down below. The options are pretty much endless and it's entirely up to you. And as you can see this farm puts out an absolute massive variety of different types of loot. 
Now, if you did want to build just one of these farms, I would highly recommend having the AFK area offset like this is. Although it is centered with two farms here, it would be offset with just one farm. So keep that in mind. There is a reason for that. And I'll show you that reason if we go ahead and give this armor stand a banner. We can turn on Foxy No Tails Markers Pack. And you'll be able to see that we have our green sphere, which is where all of the mobs will begin to start spawning. And then anything outside of this red sphere is going to instantly despawn. As you can see, this farm is designed to be inside of the center of it where no mobs will ever get into the despawning parts. And if we go down below to the trident killers, you can see that it's the same story down here. It's nowhere close to the red sphere, so you never have to worry about any of your mobs despawning. Here is one of the single farm designs, and as you can see, we have the AFK area pretty close to it, but it is cutting off some of these spawning locations, so you're actually going to lose a little bit of spawnable room here. And if you get too close to the back, then the mobs that come off the back end here can actually fall into that red area where they're going to instantly despawn. Now, for whatever reason, if you did not want all of the items and the experience points going to the AFK area, you don't have to. You can just have a switch over here and some collection chests down here to collect all of the drops. And if that's the case and you don't have to use my remote mount trident killers like I have on that, you can just use my regular high volume trident killers like pictured here. And then up top here, you can just add in a magma block and then a few fence gates. That way, all of the spiders that land over top of that magma block are going to be killed. That is a whole lot of information in a short period of time, but I got out just about everything that I wanted to tell you. So let's get started building this thing. Everything that you're going to need is going to be down inside of the description below. While you're down there, drop a like. It helps out the channel. And if you like crazy farms like these, then consider subscribing. I build a ton of them. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is find you a nice area to build this farm in. You want this to be quite a bit away from any kind of land structures or anything like that that could have mobs spawning on them, which would slow down the rates of your farm. You are going to build this inside of an ocean biome if you want drowned and squid inside of the farm to give you all of their drops. If you don't want those in the farm then you're going to want to build this somewhere over land. So in order to get started we need to chunk align this first. You don't absolutely have to but I would highly recommend it. And in order to do that we're going to basically pillar all the way up to the surface. That way we can have a platform to build off of. Now there are many different ways to chunk a line, however I'm going to be using the Fox and Notel Marker Pack, which is a wonderful pack. That's going to be linked down inside the description below. However, if you don't want to download a resource pack, there is a shorts video that I'll link in the top right that just requires leaves in a couple minutes. So in order to use this pack, once we have it loaded up, we can place down an armor stand here, give him any kind of banner, and then we're going to want to crouch and pose him four times, which is going to bring us to the mode of all of his different chunk grids. Now what we're looking for is any one of these corners that you would like to build the farm, and we are going to use this one here so our farm is going to be facing that direction so we are going to first bring some blocks over here to this corner that way we can actually build off of something remove all of those and then we are going to go to the right by four total one two three four and then into the chunk by one so this is going to be our starting block where we're going to start building everything we can now remove the armor stand remove all of these blocks down here and get started building it now to keep my OCD appeased, I'm going to be building this pretty much as an exact mirror facing the same direction. So the farm is going to be facing this direction and the AFK is going to be on this side just like that. So while standing on our block, I'm going to go up 26 blocks, not counting this block that I'm standing on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. You should now be on Y value 89. Let me go ahead and put these up and I'm going to grab my redstone and we are going to grab our comparator. We're going to place down a comparator here facing forwards. Then we are going to take two solid blocks, crouch place a block here and a block here. Then we're going to place a block going over here to the side, just like this. Now on this block here, we're going to go out an additional six in that direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are also going to want to grab us a dropper and a stair. Then you are going to place down three temporary blocks, one, two, three. On this block here, you're going to remove this block and face a dropper facing this direction. Then you're going to go back over here, remove this temporary block, place down a stair facing this direction. It should be upside down, just like so, with the dropper facing into it. Then you can remove that last temporary block. So this is what you should have. Next, grab you some hoppers and go to the right hand side of this dropper. We're going to place in a hopper going into the side. Then we're going to place in a hopper here. We're going to place in two more going this direction and then on this one we're going to place a hopper here a hopper coming out of this side over top of that stair one going this way and then two going this direction all of these hoppers should be linked together 
so they should all be flowing this direction towards this hopper into this hopper and down and then this one should be going all the way over and then straight down into this dropper here next grab you a handful of rails three hopper mine carts and also three fences we're going to place down a fence on the very end hopper there place down two rails place down a hopper mine cart and give it a nudge then we're going to remove those two place down another fence two more rails another hopper mine cart give that one a nudge remove those two rails and then we're going to do the same thing again we're going to place down another fence there another rail there add in a temporary block here with a rail on top of it and then a hopper mine cart give that a nudge and then you can remove those two rails and that temporary block so this is what you should end up with next we can grab some packed ice and place packed ice over the top of all of these and then we're going to come back to these later at this point you're going to want to grab your redstone dust and line this entire area here on this comparator we're going to want to left click on that that way that light on the front of it comes on then we want to come to this block here we're going to turn to the right and build this out by two one two turn to the right again and build this out by one then you're going to place down a redstone torch here a piece of redstone dust here with a piston facing up on the back of that block next you're going to take you a block of redstone and place it on top of that piston it should push it up like that place down a temporary block here with a piece of soul sand here remove that temporary block then on top of that soul sand you're going to place down another temporary block and surround this with glass going all the way around it just like so once you have done that then you can pillar up and remove that temporary block remove those two temporary blocks and waterlog this back piston this water is basically going to give you a landing pad to jump down from the afk area without going splat plus since you're in survival mode if you end up falling off of this it gives you a way to swim back up here Next you want to go to this block here and we're going to be building out in this direction. Just be careful that you don't nudge any of these minecarts going by. So you want to go to the end of this platform and you're going to build out in this direction by 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Then you're going to turn to the left, place down a block. Then you're going to build in this direction by 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Then one block from the end, which is this one, you're going to turn to the right and build in this direction by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Place a block to the right and a block to the left, just like that. Then you're going to turn around and come back to this block here. We're going to turn to the left and build out by 6 in this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Turn to the right, place down a block. Turn to the left, place down another block. And this is what you should have. You should end up with this section of blocks here being 16 blocks long. This one here being 15 blocks long. And these being 7 blocks in total. And 7 blocks in total with 2 there and 2 there. Next, let's go to the back to where this redstone dust is. We're going to take two temporary blocks and pillar up. We can remove those once we are up here. Then we're going to take six solid blocks on top of this redstone block and go up by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Out the back of the farm, we're going to place a temporary block here. We'll use that here in a minute. Then you're going to go up an additional three. One, two, three. On the top of this block, you should be at 101. You're going to place down a piston here facing straight up. Drop down to that temporary block. Remove the block directly underneath the piston and replace it with a piston facing straight down. Now let's go ahead and power these pistons. So we are going to go up by three. One, two, three. Remove these blocks that are directly underneath the one that you're standing on. So one, two, three. Then we're going to place down a piece of redstone dust here. A solid block out the back of it with a piece of redstone on top of it. A piece of glass on top of this piece of redstone dust with another piece of redstone dust on top of it. Then you're going to place down a solid block here. Stand on top of this and jump and place a redstone block underneath you. That should push you up off of the piston. Then we are going to take our solid blocks and go up by five. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to want to make a little platform to the side so you can stand on. Place down a temporary block here, a temporary block here. Remove this. We might even have to go down one lower. And then we're going to place down a regular piston here facing straight down. And that's basically going to be what turns the farm on and off. At this point we can remove this block that we're standing on and jump down into that flooded piston that we just put that's going to catch us and allow us to swim right back up here that way we don't fall all the way back down at this point you can pillar back up with two temporary blocks remove those two again now we're going to bring this all the way up until we get to the very top of it with all four of these here Once you get to the very top here, this block right next to that piston is going to be your AFK spot. So we can remove that very top piece of glass and place a block 
that you can distinguish as the AFK block, and that's where you're going to stand. Then you're going to place down a piece of glass here, grab you a trap door, and place down a trap door right here on the lower section of that block, and go ahead and remove that block. That trap door is going to allow all of the experience points to come through, however, if a drowned or something else were to find its way through the system, it's not going to be able to attack you and kill you. Next you're going to want to grab you a water bucket, a piece of dirt, a bunch of kelp, and also a button. We're going to open up this trap door, and that glass block that's directly below that trap door, you're going to place some water down there, and then you can close that trap door back. Then you can jump back down inside of this waterlogged piston, be sure not to uh, hit the edge of that and die. And that's basically going to fill that entire thing full of water. Now, because we're not able to have nice things, we can't quite place any kelp on top of the soul sand yet. However, you can on Java, so you're going to want to place two temporary blocks there. Go ahead and break this really quickly and place down a button there instead. A button there also. And that's going to allow you to get into the bubble column. So then you can place down a temporary block here, a temporary block here, and jump up here. And what we're going to do is replace this piece of soul sand with a block that we can actually place kelp on. So we're going to place down a temporary block there and also place a temporary block here. Remove this block, place down a dirt block here, and you can remove that temporary block. Now this dirt we're able to actually place kelp on because, well, bedrock. And we can place the kelp going all the way up to the very top, which is going to turn all of this water into source blocks. After you've got all of your kelp all the way up to the very top, you're going to want to change out this piece of dirt for a piece of soul sand. And I recommend doing that with a piece of soul sand inside of your hand because the dirt really doesn't take a whole lot to break. So go ahead and break that, replace it, and now you have a bubble column. And you're also going to want to grab a piece of glass and change out this button with a piece of glass there. And you can remove that temporary piece of glass there. Next, we're going to place in a piece of ice here, a piece of ice here. We're going to place in a piece of glass here and remove these temporary blocks. Then we can scaffold up here, jump up on this ice, remove that temporary block and connect our ice going across. So this is what you should end up with. Now, since our ice stream does go directly over top of the redstone circuit, we do need to place in all of our redstone before placing in the rest of our ice stream. So we want to go all the way to the back here and line this entire thing with redstone dust going all the way around here, all the way to the very end here. Then we're going to split going this direction all the way to the end and going this direction all the way to the end. Now you're going to go all the way back. Once you get to the end, you're going to grab yourself a temporary lever, go down to this block, place down the lever and turn it on. Then you're going to go to the very last part that is glowing, grab you some repeaters and we're going to place down a repeater here, which is going to boost that signal. And then we're going to go all the way to the end here. Right before this one, we're going to place down a repeater here, which is going to boost a signal going in both directions, which is going to give it enough to get to both the Trident Killers. And I tell everybody not to bump the minecarts, and then I bump the minecarts. Now, once you've done that and replaced the minecarts that you potentially bumped, not naming any names, you're going to want to pillar up here and jump up on this ice, remove that temporary block. Then we're going to build this out until we get to the very end of this platform, and you can place it over top of this redstone dust. Just make sure that you don't fall down and make sure that you don't change any of the settings on the repeaters. Once you get to the very end, you are going to turn to the left and go to the very end of the total blocks. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side, going directly over top of these blocks here, all the way until you get to the very end. Next, grab you some temporary blocks and some hoppers. We're going to jump down here and we are going to place down a temporary block, a temporary block here, Remove that temporary block and place a hopper going into that block there. Go ahead and remove that temporary block. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side here. So if we come over here, we're going to jump down here, place down a temporary block down here, temporary block here, remove that, place a hopper facing into that temporary block and remove that. Then we can place down a temporary block and jump back up here. Both of these hoppers should be facing in this direction. And if you go to this side, it should be facing in this direction too. So I ended up adding in a resource pack that shows which way the output of the hopper is facing. And this resource pack also shows which way the dropper is and sticky pistons and stuff like that. If you want to download it, it is on the Bedrock Tweaks website and it is under the utility function. So there's a bunch of you can select. The reason why I added this on is because it's very important for you to get these hoppers facing their correct direction and they can be a little bit tricky. So follow along closely. So this is showing that the output is facing this direction. So we want to start on whatever side you want first, but we're going to start on this one. And we are going to have 
another hopper facing into that hopper, then a hopper facing into this hopper, a hopper facing into this side, a hopper facing into this side, and then another one here, another one here, another one here, one facing this way, another facing this way, one facing this way, one facing this way, and we're going to place two more facing this way. So this is what you should have, and it's very important that these are all facing the correct direction. And if you're curious what this looks like from below, this is what it looks like from the bottom. So let's do that again. We're going to go to this hopper on the other side. We're going to place in a hopper here, a hopper going this direction, a hopper here, a hopper here, one going this direction, and we're going to place in two going this direction, two going this direction, one going this direction, one going this direction, and two, which is going to bring us back to this hopper here. And again, on this side, this is what you should have. Dude, what are you doing to that poor llama? And you bumped my carts again. Get out of here. Out of here. So apparently the mine carts are not safe from wandering traders. Keep that in mind. Next, we're going to grab us some solid blocks, some temporary blocks, a button, and also a piston. We're going to come over here to our hopper platforms, and we're going to go to this area here. We're going to place down a solid block here. Four temporary blocks on top of it. Go ahead and jump down here, remove this temporary block, place a piston facing straight down with a button on it, and give that button a press. And you can go ahead and remove all of these, and remove this block here. Do not remove that one. And then what you want to do is grab you another solid block, crouch and place one right here. These will come in use here shortly. We're going to go over here to this locked hopper and remove all of the items that just fell inside of here. Now we're going to do the exact same thing over here, so place down a solid block, four temporary blocks. We're going to jump down here, remove this block, place down a piston here, a button here, give that a press. Go ahead and remove all of these, and place down a solid block here. Don't forget to remove all of your items out of this hopper. Next you're going to grab you some redstone dust, some solid blocks, some redstone comparators, and repeaters, and you're going to come to whatever side that you'd like to start on. You're going to go down to this block here that you place down, coming out of this hopper and place down a redstone comparator. You're going to crouch place a solid block on top of that, being careful not to hit the settings on it. And then you're going to place down a piece of redstone dust here. Coming out of this redstone dust facing this direction, you're going to place two redstone comparators facing that way, and two redstone comparators facing into that block there. Then you're going to place down redstone dust here and here, with a redstone repeater coming out of it here, facing this direction on a four tick delay and then one facing this direction on a four tick delay as well. Then you can place down a solid block here and a solid block here. You're going to want to place down a piece of redstone dust on top of it with a solid block on the side here and a solid block on the side here. At this point you can grab you a redstone torch and place a redstone torch here with a solid block on top of it. You want a redstone repeater facing out of it, facing this direction with a solid block going over top of that redstone dust. On the opposite side of this block here, you're going to place down a piece of redstone dust here. You're going to build this out by three here. With a block on top of it here. Then you're going to drop down here, build this out by three. A block on top of it. And then you're going to place down a block here and a block here. On this block here, you're going to place down a redstone repeater facing into it. A redstone repeater here and a redstone repeater here. And you can take redstone dust and place dust here and dust here. Next you can place down a solid block here, 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 and here. With a piston here, a piston here, a piston here, and a piston here. At this point you're going to want to grab you some stairs and some buttons. And you're going to turn around, go to this piston here, and place a button on the back of it. Then you're going to grab you a stair, place a stair to the left side of that piston, and a stair to the left side of this piston. Make sure that they are right side up. Then we can take some glass and place glass here, glass here, two pieces of glass here, and a piece of glass here. Then you can grab you a trap door, place you down a trap door here, and then we can waterlog this stair here, this stair here, and this piston here. Everything should flow towards this opening here, which is going to basically shuttle it all onto the ice stream. Next we're going to come over to the other hopper platform, go ahead and grab your redstone comparators. We're going to place down a comparator here coming out of this hopper and facing towards that block. We're going to crouch place a block on top of it, being careful not to change the settings. Place down a piece of redstone dust here, two of your comparators facing this direction, two pieces of redstone dust here and here, 
two more comparators facing this direction towards that block. Then you're going to place down a redstone repeater here. A redstone repeater here. Both of these need to be on a four tick delay. Place down a solid block here, a solid block here, with a piece of redstone dust on top of it. Place down a solid block here, a solid block to the side of that redstone dust, and a solid block on top of that redstone dust. Then you're going to place down a redstone torch here. Jump up here and place down a solid block here, with a repeater facing in this direction. Then you are going to go to this block here. We're going to build this out in this direction by three. One, two, and three with a solid block here. In this direction by three. One, two, and three with a solid block here. And then a solid block here and a solid block here as well. Then you're going to place down a repeater here. A repeater on this side and a repeater here. With redstone dust here, here, and here. Next take you some solid blocks and place in solid blocks here, 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 and here with your pistons here, 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 and here. Then on the opposite side of this repeater here, you're going to go to this opening, place down a stair here, and a stair here. So it's right across diagonal from the opening. On the piston on the right hand side here, you're going to want a button on the back of it. Then you can grab your glass and place down two pieces of glass here, a piece of glass here, Grab you a trap door and place down a trap door here on the upper side, just like that. A piece of glass here and a piece of glass here. Then you're going to grab your water bucket and we are going to go diagonal again and waterlog this stair here, this stair here, and this piston with the button on the back of it. So all of your water should be flowing towards the opening here. You know, you got what you deserved. Next we're going to get started building out our ice stream and filling it full of water. So what we want to do is go over here to our item elevator and we're going to drag this all the way across until we get to this corner. Then we're going to basically trace the outlines here, go all the way up to the trident killer, bring this all the way across here, end by one, all the way to the other trident killer. Then from this side we're going to go all the way over to the ice stream and then all the way back to the item elevator. Next, starting at one of the trident killers, we're going to crouch and waterlog one of these repeaters. And we're basically going to go to the end here. And right before we get to this main central line, we're going to place a button here and a button on this side as well. Then we can place down some water here, which is going to flow straight down. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Waterlog in this repeater It's going to flow all the way down and be stopped by that button. That way, all of the items are basically funneled into going that direction. Then at the very end where this stops, we're going to place down a button here, waterlog this, follow this down, a button here, waterlog it, and follow it down. And then at the very end here, we can place a button like right here, waterlog this, and that's basically going to keep everything going until it gets into that bubble column. At the same time, we have all of our hopper mine carts, which I need to redo again because of wandering traders. Down below here, picking up all of the things. These do not need to be perfect. As long as they're under the ice and over the hoppers, it's going to pull everything out of the ice stream and put it into the dropper system. Now we can fully cover up this entire ice stream, so place glass over top of all of the water, just like this, and we're going to do the same thing over here too. Next, we're going to get started placing in the platform. So what we need to do at this point is grab us some glass and some solid blocks. We're going to go to whatever trident killer that you'd like, and we are going to start with making a glass ring all the way around it, just like so. Then we are going to follow up that glass ring by a solid block ring going all the way around it. Then on the side with the AFK platform and the side with the other trident, we are going to build up that all the way around on those two sides. So you should have this and then we're going to extend these out by 10 going each of these directions So this one's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and This one is the same thing. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Then we're going to turn to the left go out by 9 additional blocks 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 turn to the left and we're going to connect this all the way across we should, in the end, end up with a 8 block by 8 block opening, which is what we have. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side here, so we're going to do a glass ring going all the way around. A solid block ring going all the way around. On the side with the other trident killer and the AFK area, we're going to raise that wall up, just like this. We're going to build this out by 10 going this direction total. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 blocks this way, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
and we're going to bring this out by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to connect this across to making a eight block by eight block opening in the center. Then we can fill all of these in. We're going to do the same thing to this side over here. So fill all of this in. Once you have done that, this is what you should end up with. Now we want to extend these platforms out so they can capture all of our mobs. So you want to basically pick a platform, go to it, Find the side that is facing towards the AFK platform. We are going to extend this towards that platform by 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Place down a temporary block, a solid block, and remove that temporary block. Then we're going to go to the side that is facing towards the other trident killer. We're going to extend this by 8 as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Temporary block, solid block, remove that temporary block underneath. Next we are going to go to the other two sides in which we are going to extend out a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Temporary block, solid block, and remove that temporary block. And on this other side we're going to do the exact same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Temporary, solid, remove that temporary. Now we're going to go to the other platform and we're basically going to mirror the exact same thing. So the side that's facing the AFK area, we're going to extend by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Temporary, solid, remove that temporary. Then we're going to go towards the trident killer on this side and line it up with that block. We're going to place down eight here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We don't need to place a temporary or solid block there because there's already one there. And then we're going to do seven on each side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Temporary, solid, remove that temporary. And then on this side, you guessed it, we're going to do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Temp, solid, remove that temporary. Now at this point, you pretty much have the platforms built. You just have to link it all together. So what we're going to do is go to this block and we're going to build this all the way out until it is level with these here. And then we are going to bring this all the way over until it meets up with it. Bring this all the way over until it meets up with this block here. Bring it around. And basically make a wall going all the way around this using this tactic. And I'm pretty sure at this point you've already guessed, but it's time to fill in the floor. And after an absolute insane amount of block placing, you should have something that looks like this. Then you want to focus your attention to the very center of the farm in which you are going to count 12 blocks in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. On the 13th block, that's going to be the very center. And you're going to want to bring this up by 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. You're going to build this out to the left by 3. 1, 2, and 3. And to the right by 3. 1, 2, and 3. And then from this point you can fill this in, and this in over here, and then you can also stair this up by 2, stair this up by 1, and then on this side you're going to stair that up by 2, stair that up by 1, making kind of like a little wall. Now that we have our wall up, we're going to mark out the center of each one of these farms, and we're going to put up some slabs for redstone to run across. So we want to come down to our trident killer, we're going to go diagonal off of the corner, skip this block, and go to this block. We're going to place down four temporary blocks here. This is going to mark the exact center of this side of the farm and then we're going to take some slabs place down a upper slab here and bring your upper slabs all the way across until it runs into your wall you should find that this is exactly centered on the wall and two and a half blocks from the bottom of the floor you're going to do the exact same thing on this side here so we are going to go diagonal from the corner skip this block go to this one four temporary blocks place down a slab on top here and we're going to bring this all the way across until it runs into the wall here. That should be inside the center and again two and a half blocks up from the floor. Next we're going to focus our attention putting in some redstone. So we're going to want a water bucket, some solid blocks, we're going to want some redstone repeaters, some signs, and also some buttons. These repeaters do need to be facing from right to left so they need to be going this direction throughout the system. And we're going to start on the left hand side. So we're going to start placing in three repeaters going towards the left as stated. We're going to place down a solid block here with a stone button on the side here. Then we're going to take three signs and place a sign here, a sign here, and a sign here. Three signs on this block here facing this direction. And on the other side, three signs here facing this direction. Then we want to go up here 
and crouch and waterlog all three of these redstone repeaters. And the water should flow this direction without having any of it spilling over. Then we're going to have three more facing into this block. So one, two, and three with a solid block here. We want a button on this side this time. Then we're going to place our three signs in one, two, and three. We're going to go to this block, three signs here. And then on the other side here, one, two, and three. Then we can crouch place some water on these repeaters, just like so. And this is what you should end up with. This is going to allow the redstone signal to flow through. However, if you have any mobs that fall on top of it, they're going to go off into the mob funnel. Next, facing the farm from the AFK area, if we go to the left hand side again, we can go to the very end of our slab platform. And one from the end, we are going to turn towards the left hand side. And we are going to build these slabs out by two temporary slabs. And then we're going to want four solid slabs. One, two, three, and four. On this fourth one, we are going to place down redstone dust. We are going to place down a target block here with a lamp here. A dropper facing this direction with a hopper into the side of it. A dropper facing this direction with a hopper going into the side of that hopper. Then we're going to turn around, place a comparator here, facing out of that dropper, a sticky piston here, with a solid block on the face of it. You can go ahead and remove those two temporary blocks. Inside of one of those droppers, you're going to want to place down a single item. And now this circuit is ready. This is the T flip flop that's going to be responsible for turning this side on and off. If we go to this side over here, we can add a repeater here, with a solid block here, and a sticky piston on top. This is going to be our piston tower that's going to go up through the center of the farm. As far as the rest of this goes, we can just run redstone all the way from this block to that block, and that's going to complete this side's control mechanism. At this point, we're going to get started putting in the clock that controls this thing, so go to your empty platform, and we're going to go to the center of the farm that we have marked out. We're going to grab us a redstone block, place down a redstone block here. Then we're going to want to grab some temporary blocks and build this out by three. With temporary blocks remove these two and place a piston facing this direction then we're going to turn around we're going to build this out by two one two remove this and we're going to place down another piston facing this direction you want to turn to the left hand side place down a temporary block here jump across place down a hopper here then you're going to remove that temporary block and then place down another hopper here facing into that and then you want to jump down here we're going to place down a upper slab here we're going to bring this all the way around just like so and place one under this side as well. At this point we can go back up here, remove these two temporary blocks, and then we're going to place down a solid block here, and a solid block here, with a comparator facing this direction out of that hopper, and a comparator facing this direction out of that hopper. Grab some redstone dust, and place redstone dust here, redstone dust here. Then you're going to want to grab 32 items that stack to 64 and place inside of one of these hoppers. At this point you could place down a piece of redstone dust here, a solid block right here, with a redstone torch here, and line this all the way over until it runs into this block here. And that's going to start cycling the farm. Now we want to grab some slabs and we're going to go to this block here, we're going to place down three temporary slabs here, and then three permanent slabs here. We're going to jump back up here on these three permanent slabs, we're going to place down three pieces of redstone dust. We can grab our target block and our redstone lamp. Our target block is going to go above the redstone at the very end there. And our lamp is going to go right next to that target block over top of the redstone like so. Then we can take our dropper and place a dropper here facing towards us. A dropper facing towards the right hand side. Take you a hopper and face it into that farthest dropper there. And then take you another hopper and face into that hopper there. That way it's making one big loop. You're going to place one item inside of here. Then you can grab another slab, place a slab here with a comparator on top, and you can go ahead and remove this slab here, this slab here, and this slab here. And then you're also going to want to come on this side, and we're going to remove this slab here, these two slabs, and this slab here. That way none of the mobs get caught up on them. Now you're going to slab the entire outside wall here, including the interior wall as well. So grab you some lower slabs, and we're going to run slabs all the way around here. And then inside of the center as well, make sure that you slab all the way up here, all the way across, and back down the other side until it meets up with your pre-existing slabs. Then in all eight of your corners, you're going to build out by three. So one, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. 
one, two, and three. So once you're all done with that, it should look just like this. Now let's start adding in some water, but first we need to add in a few more components inside of our Trident Killer. So we're going to add in some optional coral fans here. These will help the mobs fall on faster. You're going to want five for each side preferably, so one here. And then you're going to want four down here, just like so. Then you're going to take three of your fence gates and place one here, one here, and one on the side here. You can open up all three of those. Then we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. So if we go over here, go down to the Trident Killer, we're going to place two here, two here, one in the corner, three fence gates, open them up. Now that's done, we can get started placing in our water. We're going to grab our water buckets and place in a source block of water, just like this, going back and forth, filling up all these until we run into the other side. We're going to do that on the remaining seven sections. And once you've done that, you're just going to add water to the corner of all four sides here. If you've done everything correctly, everything should be flowing towards the center with absolutely no dead spots, and it should all stop at the trident killer. Let's go ahead and do the other side now. And this is what you should have. Now at this point we can get started placing in our platforms. We want to go over here to this sticky piston that is extending up and down. We're going to want to lock this by placing a lever here and turning that on. And we can also place down a temporary block here and here. That way we can kind of climb up here. Go ahead and remove those since we no longer need them. And we have one piston here so we want to basically add seven more to it. So we're going to place in another one, which is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We should be at 124, and then if we add a solid block here, we should be at 125. And if we count these, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in total. And they should all be extended. Next we're going to remove the lock on this side and we're going to go all the way over here to the other side and directly above this block here which should be directly above our glass. We're going to place in one of our sticky pistons. We're going to place down a temporary block here and a lever to lock that one on and we're going to place down a redstone block and then seven more on top of this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven ending with a regular solid block we should be at 125 just like the other side be sure to remove this lever and this solid block as you can see whenever we remove all of those they all retracted now let's add in the platforms themselves so what we want to do is go over here to this very first piston and we're going to place down a solid block here we're going to bring this out by eight in total so one two three four and five six seven and eight then on the very back side, we are going to grab us a upper slab and we're going to place down a upper slab here and bring this out by eight in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then on this side, we're going to bring this out with solid blocks by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side, but with the upper slabs. So we're going to place this upper slab down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now you want exactly half of the slabs and exactly half of the solid block. So what you want to do is go ahead and fill in this section here, making it like this, bringing this all the way through. And then on this side, we're going to fill this in all the way until you get to there. Bring this all the way through, fill this all the way in, and that's going to be half of your platform there. Now we need to do the other side here with the upper slabs, and then the side as well. And this is basically the platform that you're going to be replicating all the way up to the very top, and the same thing on that side as well. So go ahead and repeat this 15 more times. It is very important to remember whenever you're building these to make sure that your slabs stay directly over top of your slabs and your solid blocks stay directly over top of your solid blocks. And after a whole lot of grinding, this is what you should have. So what we're going to do next is start with the roof and we're going to basically pick whatever side you want to go to. And we are going to place in a couple temporary blocks next to this one that's going up and down. And then we're going to place a upper slab right there. 
that is eventually going to push that into place whenever the clock cycles and then we're going to start building so on this side that has all of the slabs on it we're basically going to mimic the floor but with the tinted glass going all over the top of the slab floor and once you get that side done you are going to basically do the same thing on this side but with solid blocks so we're going to take all of our solid blocks and fill this in just like you're doing another platform now inside of the very center here we are going to waterlog that slab that we just put in and we are going to re-slab the entire top of all of these solid blocks that way we don't have any spawns up here this time you are using lower slabs and then we're going to build out by seven with leaves one two three four five six seven go to this side here build out seven with leaves go out on the other side here build out seven with leaves one two three four five six seven and on this side as well one two three four five six seven and then we're going to fill this all in And then once you have this side done, you're going to do the exact same thing to this side over here. Now at this point, I would recommend grabbing a lot of water buckets and also an Elytra. Either that or make a nice despawn platform where you can run way away from these mobs and get them to despawn. But what you want to do is go inside of here and basically waterlog every one of these pistons. So you can break that and then go down. We can replace that. Flood that one there. Break it and then go down here. Replace that, flood it, and so forth all the way down until you have the entire farm waterlogged. Now that the roof is all set, we are just about done with this farm. However, there are a few final touches that we need to add before it's ready to go. The next thing that we're going to do is just do a few double checks and make sure that everything is set up properly. We're going to go to these two droppers facing into each other. Only one of these two should have one item inside of it, so that one's empty. And this one has an item. That one is good to go. And then we're going to check this side as well. This one has an item. This one is empty. So that is good to go. It does not matter what side it is in as long as there's one in there because it's going to toggle it back and forth. Then we're going to go down here and double check our trident killers. And we have two hoppers that are going to lock here. So we have this one here that's going to lock. We're going to check and make sure that there's no item inside of there. And then this one underneath this block that's receiving the redstone, this one's going to lock as well. Make sure that there's no item inside of there. We can go back into that hopper and take a non-stackable item and throw inside of there. I prefer using wooden swords because they're cheap. Throw one non-stackable item inside of this side and then we're going to go to the other side. Double check these two. We don't have an item there. We don't have an item there and we can throw in another non-stackable item. Next we're going to be throwing in our tridents. However, you can see that our trident killers are absolutely full of mobs. So I would highly recommend either making a bridge and going far away so they all despawn or flying away if you have an elytra. Now that they are all despawned, we're going to throw in our trident. So you can use up to four tridents inside of here, and preferably they should have the impelling five enchantment on them. That way you get the fastest killing possible. So we are going to go all the way inside of here. Make sure that you don't hit any of the fence gates, and make sure that you throw them directly on the bottom here. So we're going to throw four inside of this side. And then we're going to go to the other side here, and throw four inside of this side. Right now would also be a really good time to remove this glass here that is directly underneath your clock and then do the same thing on this side as well just make sure that you don't have any creepers falling on your head at this point you're good to go all you need to do is throw down a lever here and flip it on for the trident killers to be activated and then the farm is going to be completely functional now you can put down a pressure plate if you would like here however it is going to make this trap door flip so you might want to change it out for something else if you use a pressure plate there if you don't have your farm cycling, then what you need to do is go ahead and shoot that target block. Shooting that one, you should have that light come on, and then that should keep the water flowing. Or if the water is flowing already, it's going to make it start cycling again. And then if you shoot this one, that one's going to turn the farm completely off and keep the platform flooded. Keeping these flooded at all times is basically going to turn this into a squid and a drowned farm. So it really all depends what you're wanting to harvest. I did also have on very rare instances during testing a few of the mobs being pushed off of the top there and they were pushed off by another mob which does not happen very often and they would land on top of here and survive and then they would run around here. This is pretty much spiders that do it. All of the other mobs really can't reach. So if you want to mitigate this issue all you need to do is just place down some glass panes here and then remove that. Then you can bring these glass panes all the way up. And that's going to basically keep all of those spiders from being able to slingshot off of the very edge and land on top of the wall. 
And if you still have trouble with spiders after that, you can always build these walls all the way up to the very top. I like to use glass and I think that it looks rather cool. You can of course use tinted glass too, but it's going to be very, very expensive. Well guys, that's going to wrap up this Minecraft Bedrock Edition General Mob Farm. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this farm and I hope that you get a ton of use out of this for many, many years to come. I know that this was a longer tutorial than normal, however there's kind of a lot of fine details and game mechanics that we need to go over to ensure the proper function of this farm and making sure that everything is constructed correctly. I'm going to try to edit this down as small as I can for you guys, however it is probably going to still be a sizable tutorial. If you feel like the video deserved a like then please drop a like down below and while you're down there if you have not already done so then consider subscribing. With almost 200 videos on my channel there's a ton of content and I'm sure that you'll find something else that you'll love. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.